What's going on y'all? Welcome. In this video, I'll be breaking down the complete disassembly of the fat PS3 models CECHK and CECHL along with performing routine maintenance by replacing both the CMOS battery and thermal paste. These two models are nearly identical to take apart so I'm combining them together into one video. This video may also help with some other PS3 models seen in this screenshot here. If you plan to do this yourself, proceed at your own risk. My recommendation is to ensure you have all the proper tools. I'll put them down in the description. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Now step one, removing the top plastic cover. This involves one T10 security screw and seven number two screws. At the bottom of the console, there will be a security sticker covering up a small black rubber cover that once removed reveals the security T10 torque screw. Take that out. Once that is out, simply slide the black PlayStation 3 top downward to the left or to the left and lift off. Now there are seven number two screws to sh remove as shown. Once these are out, at the top right there is a small clip to be depressed in order to then lift the cover off. Be careful not to pick up your console and move it too much at this point as the Blu-ray drive is not screwed down here. Now, step two, removing the power supply, the disk drive, and the hard disk. This involves five Phillips number one and number two screws, three power connectors, and one ribbon cable, and then one more Phillips for the hard disk. First is the power supply. Remove the power connector at the bottom first. This can be quite difficult at times as dust has settled inside the crevices of the connector, forming a sort of seal. You can use pliers to assist with these connectors. Best method is to bite the plastic and wiggle and take your time. Then remove the five screws as shown here. Take note of the length and size of the screws as you pull them out. They differ slightly but are labeled with M to dictate a smaller head. Once the Phillips screws are out, lift with your hand at the top left and use a pry tool on the bottom right of the power supply as this is where it is connected to the motherboard. You can then remove the main connector at the back by squeezing and pulling. This can also be done before lifting out if you'd like. Now the disk drive has one power connector at the bottom here. And then the ribbon connector here. Gently lift the black plastic clamp here and pull it out. Be careful here as the black tab can break easily, but it's not as bad as the A, B, and E model PS3s. If you're on the K model, this ribbon cable will be slightly larger, but removing is all the same. Now on the bottom of the console, there will be a plastic door that pops right off with the blue Phillips screw under it. This is where your hard drive is located. Make sure to use the correct driver here as it can strip easily. Then grab the latch and remove it. All right, step three, undoing the motherboard sandwich. This involves removing 18 screws for the K model or 16 for the L model and a single power connector for the fan. This is the only portion of the teardown that differs slightly between the two models. First up is the antenna at the top held down by one screw then popping off the snap-on connector. Note that if you have the K model the antenna has a slightly longer wire and snaps in in a slightly different spot. On the L model after the antenna screw there are 10 more screws around the perimeter as pointed out here. There are two different types like earlier. The smaller head screws are dictated with an M next to them whereas the longer whereas the larger ones only have an arrow. Once those are out you can then remove this top half of the hard disk cage. Now if you have the K model there will be an additional two screws as shown here. Once all of those are out, the only major difference between the two is that the K model has a separate PCB for the USB slots connected to the main board via a ribbon cable. Just push the black tab shown here down to release pressure and pull the right side ribbon cable out. Then lift off the USB PCB and set it aside. I lift it off in unison with the antenna to keep them together. Now remove the four screws holding down the CPU and GPU pressure clamps. This will give us a screw count of 15 on Model L or 17 on Model K. Well, now the top half of the motherboard chassis can be removed with a bit of wiggling. The last screw is holding down the ground cable at the upper left corner. I always like to save the ground screw for last. Directly to the right of the ground screw is the connector for the fan. Pull it out with pliers or by the cables if necessary. Just be careful. You can then remove the motherboard with or without the bottom chassis. The thermal paste is what is holding the board to the heat sinks. Go around the perimeter and gently pry up and eventually it'll come undone and now we're on to the final stretch. Okay, so now for the final step. We will just have seven screws for the fan and bottom plastic housing. Then we're going to replace the CMOS battery and the thermal paste and then reassemble. The final seven screws are for the fan and bottom plastic housing. First up is the fan with three number two screws. The fan is keyed so it can't go back in incorrectly. The four screws holding down the plastic housing around the heat sinks then come out. Up on both of these kind of at the same time. Should be two different pieces. All right, so now replace the CMOS battery as shown here. 
These batteries are important because they keep the date in time as well as the PlayStation Sync data that allows you to play digitally bought games without needing to connect to the internet. I have a whole video going over what the CMOS battery is and what it does if you'd like to check it out. Use a plastic pry tool if you have one to pop out the old battery and then snap in a new one. You can also measure the voltage if you'd like. A fresh battery typically has around 3.3 volts and they often fail somewhere below 3.0 volts. Rebuild your fan, heat sinks, and bottom metal chassis. Once that is done, clean off the thermal paste on the processors and heat sinks as shown. Use isopropyl alcohol in as high of a percentage as possible, 99% being the best. Now apply thermal paste to the processors. There are many different methods for applying. I typically go with the dot or the X method. What's important is changing it every three to five years or so to have your console last for many years to come. Careful not to drop your board like I almost do twice here. <laughs> now drop the motherboard back in at an angle like this and settle it on the plastic and then settle it on the black plastic alignment pins in the bottom corners. From here, put the top metal chassis back on and then replace the metal pressure brackets to apply pressure from the processors to the heat sinks with the paste between. And then continue your reassembly. Go back through the video if any help is needed during your reassembly. And that's that. If you like videos like this, I have a few others on the PS5 and the PS3 Super Slim, and we'll be making another on the B model PlayStation 3, a sort of forgotten and somewhat rare variant of the original two models that came out at launch. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer. And if there are any other PS3 topics you'd like to hear me talk about, let me know. I'll talk to you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya.